Marley was dead to begin with. So begins one of the most heartfelt and uplifting pieces of literature ever written, Charles Dickens' 1843 novella, A Christmas Carol. For many, this classic is as much a part of the holiday season as tinsel or turkey. The novella has been adapted to the big screen alone over 20 times. However, I personally believe the best adaptation is The Muppet Christmas Carol. This is my favourite Christmas movie. This was the first Muppet production to be made after Jim Henson's untimely death in 1990. The film was directed by Brian Henson, Jim's third child and eldest son. Brian successfully continued his father's legacy. There was doubtless a lot of pressure to get this film right. Personally, I think the finished product is as good as it is, in part due to that pressure. Before we begin, be warned this video will include spoilers. This was the first Muppet film to directly adapt a pre-existing work of fiction. It has happened again since, with varying results. To be honest, I'm surprised it hasn't been done more often, because it works incredibly well in this film. The Muppet Christmas Carol seamlessly blends Dickens' superlative work with the Muppet's signature style of humour. What right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right of you to be dismal? You're rich enough. He's got him there, the old boy's speechless. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be cooked with his own turkey mm. and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Ooh. Well, not quite speechless. This is an unexpectedly faithful adaptation of Dickens' original novella. Casting Gonzo as Charles Dickens and having him and Rizzo guide viewers through the narrative helps make the Victorian writing more accessible to modern audiences without compromising the original work. My name is Charles Dickens. And my name is Rizzo the Rat. Hey, wait a huh? second. You're not Charles Dickens. I am too. No, a blue furry Charles Dickens who hangs out with a rat. Absolutely. This setup leads to a number of comedic moments. How do you know what Scrooge is doing? We're down here and he's up there. I keep telling you, storytellers are omniscient. I know everything. <laughs> Hoity toity, Mr. Godlike Smarty Pants. To conduct a proper search, Scrooge was forced to light the lamps. How does he do that? Gonzo's Dickens often directly quotes the novella. He was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner. In fact, the film includes numerous quotes from the novella, many of which were already iconic lines. My taxes go to pay for the prisons and the poor houses. The homeless must go there. But some would rather die. If they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. While the ghosts of Christmas past, present and yet to come are portrayed by Muppets, the decision not to cast any pre-existing characters in the roles adds legitimacy to the spirits. The film's ending even directs viewers to read the book. Nice story, Mr. Dickens. Oh, thanks. If you like this, you should read the book. If you are interested in reading the novella, but don't want to seek out a physical copy, you can easily read it online by going to the appropriately titled Charles Dickens Online. I'll put the link in the description. The Victorian era, especially on screen, has always felt especially Christmassy, which isn't surprising considering many of our modern traditions originated in that period. The film's depiction of Victorian London is undeniably stylized but feels totally believable. This is a world in which humans and Muppets coexist. Visually, it actually reminds me somewhat of Diagon Alley from the Harry Potter films. Or, well, since this film was made first, perhaps Diagon Alley reminds me of the Muppet Christmas Carol. It should be noted that puppetry in Muppet films is often very impressive, and so often taken for granted. Many of the practical effects in this film still impress me. There's magic in the air this evening. Yeah, well, so, okay, so here's where Kermit b b blows the, the candle out, and everybody always talks about, how'd you get Kermit to blow out that candle? And yeah. honestly, I'm pretty sure we just had a tube on the other side of his head. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we just blew through the tube. It was actually very, very old school. It's a credit to the performers, viewers don't see the Muppets as puppets, but rather as characters with personalities, heart, and perhaps most importantly, life. The visual effects never pull viewers out of the reality of the film. Director Brian Henson masterfully balances the film's various, almost conflicting tones. 
If you please, Mr. Scrooge, it's gotten colder. Yeah. And the bookkeeping staff would like to have an extra shovel full of coal for the fire. We can't do the bookkeeping. Yeah, all of our pens have turned to inksicles. Yeah. Our assets are frozen. How would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly... Unemployed! This is my island in the sun. Um, Many of the jokes are made funnier by viewers' knowledge of the Muppet characters. Today, you become a man of business. I'm looking forward to it, Headmaster. Mm, you will love business. It is the American way. Sam. Hmm? It's just the just... thing. Oh, it is the British way. Good. While their distinctive humour is certainly prevalent throughout, the film is almost surprisingly mature when required. It doesn't shy away from the darker and more mature elements of the book. Certain scenes are appropriately eerie and unsettling, without ever compromising the film's family-friendly tone. Whoa, that's scary stuff. Hey, should we be worried about the kids in the audience? Nah, it's all right, this is culture. The narrator straight up abandons the audience when the ghost of Christmas yet to come arrives. Oh, this is too scary. I don't think I want to see any more. Oh, when you're right, you're right. You're on your own, folks. We'll meet you at the finale. Yeah. Oh. Um... This is actually a clever move, as removing the main source of comic relief adds to the mounting tension and allows it to become the focus. Likewise, the more emotional moments, such as Tiny Tim's death, are genuinely moving. How is the churchyard? Well, it'll be lovely, Emily. It would have done you good to see how green the place is. I, I picked a spot for Tim where he can see. Uh, it's, it's a spot on the hill. And you can see the ducks on the river. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim always loved watching the ducks on the river. In fact, the film is filled with touching moments. I just wish there was something we could give you. A gift? A gift for me? Thank you. Unlike the three previous Muppet films, which had avoided mentioning casts in their opening titles altogether, this film credits the Muppet characters themselves rather than their performers, a gimmick that would then be repeated in the follow-up film Muppet Treasure Island. Michael Caine gives a fantastic performance as Ebenezer Scrooge. Humbug. Despite the vast majority of his co-stars being puppets, Caine takes the role entirely seriously and plays it straight. Michael, right from the beginning, said, I'm going to play the movie like I'm acting opposite the Royal Shakespeare Company. And, and it takes a really good comedian to understand that if they play a part really dramatically, the result is going to be funny because of the circumstance. So he knew that the more sincerely he played Scrooge, the funnier the dynamic would be between him and, and the other Muppet characters. Though he initially portrays Scrooge as a truly despicable person, Kane also manages to make the character sympathetic. Wait, wait, I know. An unwanted creature, but not a ratalich or a cockroach. Then what? Then what? What? It's Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes! <laughs> That's a killer! His performance in the graveyard is genuinely emotional. The character's redemptive arc is well executed. The human cast interact very naturally with their Muppet co-stars. Merry Christmas, Fred. Merry Christmas, Bob. For fans of the Muppets already familiar with A Christmas Carol, it is fun to see the iconic characters take on the equally iconic roles. And there he is, old Fuzzywick himself. Look, my lads, dusk has fallen, and the lamplighters are at work. It's Christmas Eve for certain. Prior to his death, Jim Henson had performed a number of Muppet characters, most notably Kermit the Frog. For this film, he was succeeded by Steve Whitmire. Whitmire's performance was incredibly close to Henson's own, which helped smooth the transition. Bob Cratchit? Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Who is this? It's Mr. Applegate, sir. He's here to speak to you about his mortgage. 
Whitmire continued to perform Kermit, as well as a number of other Muppet characters, until 2017, which is all I'm going to say about that. As with nearly every Muppet film, music is a huge part of the Muppet Christmas Carol. The score was composed by Miles Goodman, with songs by Paul Williams. Williams had previously worked on the Muppet movie, including co-writing the iconic song Rainbow Connection. His songs are all incredibly memorable, full of heart and Muppety style. Oh, there goes Mr. Humbug, there goes Mr. Grimm. If they gave a prize for being mean, the winner would be him. Additionally, they help move the plot forward. For example, the opening song, Scrooge, does an incredible job establishing the character of Ebenezer Scrooge by showing his reputation among the residents of London. He charges folks a fortune for his dark and drafty houses as poor folk live in misery. It's even worse for mouses. Please, sir, I want some cheese. Together with Goodman's phenomenal score, the music perfectly captures that uniquely special feel of Christmas. It is the season of the heart, a special time of caring, the ways of love made clear. Honestly, it was a struggle not to include the entire soundtrack in this video. This film was actually the first time Michael Caine sang on screen. With a thankful heart, with an endless joy, with a growing family, every girl and boy will be nephew and niece to me. Nephew and niece to me. Bring love, hope, and peace to me. Love, hope, and peace to me. One song has caused some controversy. Though present in the theatrical cut, When Love Is Gone was subsequently removed from many home media releases, before later being reinstated for others. It was almost always. The song's inclusion or exclusion has become the film's most controversial talking point. The Muppet Christmas Carol is the kind of film that can be enjoyed by everyone both young and old, whether you celebrate Christmas as a faith-based holiday or not. The film, like the original novella, encapsulates the spirit of Christmas, beyond the superficial, and should be considered essential holiday viewing. Of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film in the comments. Also, let me know what your favourite Christmas movie is. And so, as Tiny Tim observed... God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Incidentally, a happy Christmas to all of you at home. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Maybe share it with a friend. Or an enemy. Either way, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.